everyone! We are so glad, as always, to have you here with us today. Before we dive into today's topic, I'll give you a second to hit subscribe and maybe the little bell to make sure you don't miss it when we drop new content. Awesome! Thank you so much, everyone. It means the world. So, today, we're talking about solar arrays, or farms. In order for them to generate enough energy to scale for widespread utility usage, they need land, and lots of it. But land is a precious commodity itself. So when we talk about building enormous solar farms on masses of uninhabitable desert, it seems like a no-brainer, right? Unfortunately, not quite. Building solar farms on deserts is no easy feat. But the energy capacity is alluring, to say the least. Researchers hypothesized in 2018 that if they could use 9 million square kilometers of the Sahara Desert for wind and solar energy production, it would provide four times the current demand for global energy every year. They found, through some pretty amazing modeling, that if this project happened, the rainfall in the area would increase by double each year. The lead researcher, Dr. Lee, said that this would result in vegetation increasing by 20%. How exactly does that happen? Solar panels are dark in color, meaning they have a low albedo, so they reflect little radiative energy from the sun back into space, compared with the high albedo of the desert sand. So the panels lead to increased solar energy being absorbed and then extra heat being emitted. This raises the ground temperature, causing an increase in the Sahara heat low pressure system, leading to warm air rising, where it then cools off and moisture condenses, making more rainfall. If the size of the solar farm reaches 20% of the size of the Sahara, all of that extra vegetation triggers a feedback loop. Heat being emitted from the panels causes more precipitation and vegetation growth. This increase in plants leads to an increase in water evaporation, and subsequent increase in rain, and yet more plants grow. So it seems like the desert could not only provide power to the Earth's human, but feed them too. The downside isn't obvious, but it's here, in the interconnectedness of everything on Earth. A study published earlier this year found that this new climate created by the solar panels was not limited by geography. That is, these changes, yes, climate changes, would in fact impact the whole globe. Using an advanced Earth system model, the researchers found that these effects include global temperature rise, especially over the Arctic, the redistribution of precipitation, which would lead to droughts and forest degradation in the Amazon, northward expansion of deciduous forests in the Northern Hemisphere, weakened El Nino Southern Oscillation and Atlantic Nino Variability, and enhanced tropical cyclones. This prediction is reminiscent of the global climate around about 6,000 years ago, when the Sahara was both greener and wetter. The researchers admit that there are even other elements of the greener Sahara which they did not model for, like the reduction of dust being blown from the Sahara to places like the Amazon. Now, this might seem insignificant, but the dirt carries essential nutrients and would lessen, if not stop altogether, if the desert land was covered in vegetation. On the face of it, a greener, wetter Sahara desert with a solar farm capable of powering the Earth's people? Sounds great, but could create more problems than it solves. As with anything related to abating climate change, divorcing ourselves from fossil fuels, and transitioning to a more sustainable future, it's not straightforward. If it were, we would have to assume it would have been done a long time ago. So all we can do is continue to research and try to understand the fine balance and complexity of this planet to work with it, not against it. And on an individual level, every day we can try to do just one thing better with a little bit more mindfulness than we did yesterday. Thank you, as always, for joining us, Swarmers. We are so genuinely excited to be on this journey with you. Now go, go get outside, look around, and take in the beauty all around you. If you're in the middle of the city, it might not be obvious right away, but I promise there's beauty in nature close by. Just go and find it, and you will not regret it. Sending lots of love, stay safe, 
and we'll see you next time.